All right, repairing this Bosch tankless hot water heater. The uh, hydro generator inside isn't running. It doesn't even tick or do anything to light up. Now uh, you can see in there the little lights are off. They're normally off if the water's not running. First thing to do for taking this case off is to pull out these two knobs. They just pop right in like so. And then this one, you pull both of them out just like that, pop them off. This one's actually broken, so we're not gonna worry about that. Then down underneath here, you'll see a screw there. And then on the opposite side here, you'll see a screw right there. And that's actually what we're gonna be uh, unscrewing both of those. In the top corner, there's just a little lip that goes inside. Uh, if I can get it to focus on it right here. You can, it's just, once you do the bottom two screws, the whole case lifts up and off. And then you uh, should be inside. All right. This is our Bosch tankless water heater. It's a 1600H is the version. Uh, that's the front cover. We were having a problem with uh, the spark wasn't even clicking. Uh, if you have a, a hot water heater, you'll know it makes a clicking sound right before it ignites the pilot light. Uh, that is run by a hydro generator. Uh, we were having a problem, no light would come on, it wouldn't tick at all. And this was the part that's bad back here, is the hydro generator. Uh, it's supposed to, as the water goes through, it produces about two volts worth of power. That runs a control circuit, just turn on and off the gas, and then also it has all the temperature uh, gauges and, and uh, sensors on it. So what happened is it, it wouldn't light, so we took it apart, uh, we plugged the voltmeter into here, we weren't getting anything out of it, uh, so we took a... Uh, that night we needed hot water, so we took uh, some D batteries, which that is right over here. And we hooked them up with a bunch of wires so we could actually feed these two wires into the head here and get 1.5 volts, which was enough to get us hot water until we could get a brand new uh, hydro generator in. So we've ordered the hydro generator and we're going to sit it and put it in here. Uh, this is our little box of things that it came with. It was about 100 bucks with shipping and everything, but definitely beats calling a plumber and having them come out and do their part. So. I'm gonna put this together in here and try to walk you through uh, replacing that part. It's pretty easy. Uh, you don't really even need any tools except for maybe a pair of pliers. I uh, definitely suggest getting a towel for the floor. You can see there, there was past water damage. That wasn't us, that was whoever lived here before. But uh, you'll need something to catch some of the water that comes out when you first open the system. So what you wanna do first is turn off the water. Here. Sometimes it's a bunch of turns. And this here is the relief valve. So what I'm gonna do is get a bucket, stick it underneath there, pull that valve out, and dump all the water out of the actual system itself. That way we don't have water running out when we disconnect the little uh, pipe back there. All right, be right back. So we're gonna put the bucket down here. You see I have some uh, generic ShamWow. I've tried to maybe stop from going down between the baseboards and the wall. We're gonna go ahead and pull, Let's see if we can focus it here, this pin out with a pair of pliers and that's going to release this bottom tube out of the bottom of the hydro generator. I can't do that on camera because I can't hold the camera and do that at the same time. Alright, so we've removed the metal pin. You can see it's dripping now. It's pretty straight. Uh, you can just wait for it to stop because eventually it's going to stop. Uh, the pin actually comes out of those two holes, pops straight out. This whole piece then comes down and out of the pipe. You can see it just swivels on the other end with no problem. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in there until the water slows down a bit just because it runs down the pipe and more into my bucket instead of along the wall. You're definitely going to get some on the wall. Sorry, I was talking and not looking at what I was focused on. So the next part is this top clip you can see right here. We're just going to pull that out and off the pipe itself. Uh, I might be able to do that with my hand while filming. I can. Pop it off just like that. So then this whole piece is going to pull straight down. There's like a rubber grommet inside of here. And you just pull it straight down off of here. We'll go ahead and give it a shot. Alright. So. Here we have the hydro generator. This is the old one. You can see through there the little tube is much smaller. Uh, you won't be able to see because of the lighting. But the entrance to it is on the left hand side that goes into the hydro generator. And that's the other side here. Little tiny tube. Oh, sorry. Pretty. 
interesting. So this thing inside, it's got a magnet with little wheels on it that normally generates the uh, two volts of power. Uh, something went wrong with ours. I don't know if it broke or came loose inside. Uh, I don't know if I'll take it apart. It's got some kind of resin that holds it together. Okay, found the round piece. So inside of this little tube, you'll find this little thing and it goes blue side up, right inside of it. And it actually sits right on top of this pipe here we pulled out. It sits right there and that controls the water flow, pushing it around to the hydro generator. So you just wanna make sure that, that you get uh, this side down. If it is green, green side up, it goes right inside the hydro generator this direction for the water flow. All right, now we will put the new one on. Uh, remember that little blue piece I was telling you about? This one actually has it inside of the filter already. So you don't have to worry about installing on the new one if it's already in there. If it does pop out, that's the way you want to install it back in with the little uh, tri-arm thing on the bottom. Okay, so when you see this old hydro generator has got that uh, rubber gasket right here. We're gonna try to replicate that. So we're gonna set this off to the side. And then we got out of our little package, we got the little rubber grommet thing comes out of here. We're gonna put that back on the end of this and that'll fit into the top pipe. It comes with a spare pipe, or I guess a replacement pipe. It would go like this normally, but I don't see any reason to use it. Uh, my other one is fine, it's not corroded or anything. Everything works good on that one. So we're just gonna put that little rubber grommet on here and then uh, we'll get, on, get installed. Okay, after a bit of trial and error, I found out that it's better to put the bottom end on first. Cause it's really important you get those pins on the outside of the copper and it takes a bit of pressure to put it up in there so that the pins come out and can actually slide all the way across. You can see how it'll slide across into the other side here. Well, I'm gonna have to play with it some more. But you want it to go across and then come back into these two sides over here. But it does take a little bit of pressure and you don't wanna be pushing up on it when it's connected to that nozzle because you don't wanna put pressure up into the system. So, maybe that's the way we're gonna do it. All right, so that's what it looks like totally done. You can see the pin is actually coming out here on the end, and it goes all the way across on both sides. So you wanna definitely make sure it's all the way locked in like that. All right, new hydrogen is in place. Uh, once I attached it down here at the bottom, I just put it up into this pipe up here and put the clip back on. Uh, this is keyed, so there's only one way to plug it in anyway. So just make sure you don't try to force it or anything like that. And then we should have a working hot water heater. Let's go turn on the water and see what happens. All right. Uh, just turn the water back on. You can hear it start clicking right then. That's the water going into the system, filling it back up again. I'm just gonna go in and open this valve up all the way and then turn it back down, maybe a fourth turn once it's fully open, just for good measure. So that ticking is the water going through. That means this is definitely working. That's the sparker, which is or the igniter, which is right in here, that's into the pilot light tube. The gas actually comes up through here. When the water flows on, it turns on the circuit, uh, turns the gas on, the gas comes right through this little screen up through here and goes down inside. I uh, don't know if you can see it, there's like a metal piece right at the end of that hose. That uh, That's what makes the spark, which lights everything up. All right, let's go turn on the hot one. All right, there we go. You can hear the light hum as it's going around there. It lets you know that it's working and then you can see the fire in there. Lit right up and you got a green light on the console. So that's how you replace a hydro generator on a Bosch 1600H uh, tankless hot water heater. Well, first time I've ever done that. Learn something new every day. Uh, also, this here, this is an internet tip thing. It's a spark cable to start off the sparks. They said if it's touching any piece of metal, sometimes it'll arc from the cable to the metal instead of going to the igniter. So one guy suggested just putting like a plastic straw all over it. It already had some electrical tape but uh, just to make sure that it doesn't get grounded or shorted or anything. That's nothing you have to actually do, but just a pro tip somebody on the internet said.